Hi everybody, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with my second video on John Bonnet Ramsey. This one is answering questions that you guys messaged me about what I was picking up around John Bonnet's passing. And a lot of them had to do with Patsy and why Patsy wasn't responsible or was she responsible? Was her father responsible? Was Burke responsible after he did that TV show? Was the older brother, I think it was John Andrew, responsible? Who was responsible? Was it the preacher in the neighborhood? I think his name was Bob that everybody was asking about. Who was responsible for John Bonet? Here is what I got really very vividly and very strongly. First off, when it comes to Patsy, Patsy is not prepared to bring anything that's going to cause her scrutiny or criticism. So she's going to present herself in a way that is best for her, in a light that suits her. Having said that, I got the strong feeling that she loved her daughter and let her daughter down and she was aware of this. I don't believe that Patsy thought that this was going to happen to her daughter. I feel like she thought it could happen, it may happen, but that it wasn't going to happen. I feel like Patsy thought she was lucky or it was a lucky circumstance. She loved John Bonet in the sense that John Bonet brought her, you know, everything that she wanted and how she wanted to be seen. So it was slightly from an ego standpoint, but there was a genuine connection there. And I do feel that Patsy blames her husband for this. I got that really strongly. She blames him for the passing of their daughter. She doesn't say he did it, she blames him as though it's his acquaintances, his reasons, and because of him that their daughter passed, which is an interesting thing to say because I would assume when your daughter's in the pageant world that maybe you're putting her out there in a way that's very public. And so Patsy was giving me the impression, although she did put her out in the pageant world, there were other things that were happening because of her husband that put John Bonet in more danger. Now, when it came to Burke, I did say in the first video that John Bonet absolutely thought that that was really ridiculous that anybody thought that her brother would have killed her. That didn't happen. It was not Burke. Burke did not kill her. I know that he appeared very weirdly, very shaken with odd facial expressions on a afternoon talk show recently. And this is what led people to believe that he was guilty of something. I would word it differently. I would say that Burke has been traumatized through the same kind of abuse that his sister endured, both physical, mental, and sexual. I'm going to say that. I'm gonna clarify it in this video. I feel both children were being sexually abused. I feel both children were in the process of being publicly displayed in certain ways, uh, visually, through camera, through movie, but especially John Bonet. But I feel like Burke was traumatized through these abuses as well. So when you are dealing with Burke and you are watching him on camera, I think what you're seeing is a traumatized person who has gone through a lot and doesn't have the appropriate responses at the appropriate times because the personality isn't integrated fully into him. So he's responding as if he's different people at different times. That's why I actually think it's inappropriate. I think there's more than one personality with that kid. And I think when he went on camera, he was behaving in the personality that he thought he was supposed to. So this is a fragmented personality is what I'm seeing. It isn't the, the personality of the nine-year-old who killed his sister because he didn't kill his sister. That's what she said to me on that I'm clear of. It is it has nothing to do with Burke killing John Bonet. That didn't happen. That's not what I saw and that's my take on it. You can have your take on it, but that's my take from the energy that I felt. Now, what I do feel was happening at the time, and I feel there's a lot of guilty parties, including some that work with the Boulder, I'm gonna say police or Boulder authorities. I'm not quite sure I wanna use the word police as much as I do authorities and say that there were a lot of people that knew what was going on with John Bonet in the sense that I feel, like I said in the first video, when she was ashamed and put her head down and didn't want to speak, this had to do with the way that people looked at her, which is why she wasn't wearing makeup and did not look 
like the beauty queen girl would have done up. If you look at Patsy Ramsey as she was an adult woman, she was very nicely dressed, but she was, I mean, nothing flamboyant, but she was also a pageant person. And so she was very well put together with a lot of makeup on and she was, you know, dressed properly, socially, if you will, and put together beautifully. Her daughter was not that way. Her daughter, in the image that I saw, and keep in mind, I'm talking about John Bonet growing up into her adulthood on the other side. That just means that she's living her life on the other side without the physical body. But still, how she appeared to me, how she chose to show herself in physical form to me from the other side, which is a bit of a dichotomy in and of itself, but how she chose to show herself was not made up, kind of um, understated, and probably just really normal, okay? Like that's just really kind of plain, and it's the way that she preferred it. This is how she preferred to be seen, and it was something inside of her that didn't want to be seen in a different way. She was very adverse to that, and was again in this last time when I was meditating and asking to connect with her. The feeling I got is that she chose not to be seen from when we see her on the other side, mediums and psychics that are trying to communicate with her, she chooses how she gets to be seen and she's making that very clear. She does not want her image to be that of the image that was left here. And I don't think she's talking about the six-year-old girl, pageant girl that we saw in the newspapers and all of those images. I believe she's talking about the underground images that were taken of her because she was photographed in a child abusive way or pornographic way at some of her photo shoots, there is a photographer that she shows me very clearly. I do not get a name. I do not always get names. I'm not gonna pretend to get a name when I don't get a name in case you wanna know. But she shows me a photographer and this man, I can pull the image up in my head at the moment. This man is brown hair, but on the lighter side of brown hair, um, tall and slender, kind of looks like he might have Scottish or Irish in him. The eyes are hazily browny, greeny eyes, and he's a photographer. He's a local guy, and there's a lot of kids that go through his studio. He caters to kids and young kids, or probably pageant kids and acting kids. I, I might want to word it like that. Um, doesn't really take people over about the age of 20, 23, right around there. Works with all of the young people going up was probably around the age of 45 through about 48 at the time that John Bonet passed. And there is another kind of chubby or blonde man with him that pays good money for these pictures, okay? So it feels as if there's some sort of child distribution ring as far as these pictures are going. And the pictures are not always provocative the way that you and I would think, like it's not just of little naked kids and it's not every kid he photographs. He photographs kids and it depends on the demand for the look of the child. So if there's a demand for a particular looking child, let me give you an example. She's showing me an image of a brunette boy that was a friend of hers when she was little that had really thick hair and kind of a big face, kind of a big face kid with really thick hair, still alive, male, and he was quite popular. This was somebody that she was also friends with who was a little entertainer type of a child. She also flashes my mind really quickly to another girl that was a friend of hers growing up. The girl looks nothing like a pageant child right now, nothing. Like, I mean, there's no pageant to her at the moment. She could, to me what that means is she could have like um, piercings or tattoos or something along those lines because it would be whatever isn't accepted in the pageant world. So if you look at Miss America, Miss Teen USA, any of those things, very rarely do we see women with, um, you know, a lot of jewelry, um, a lot of nail polish, you know, it's not really the goth look or the tattooed look. That's how she's kind of drawing my attention, that this girl was also picked, also photographed, and was somebody who we wouldn't know as a pageant person now, but you would know if you looked her name up. In other words, she was a little friend of John Bonet's, and she too went through something similar, although doesn't have the same kind of memory. The memories are being, are being uncovered at the moment by some people, so some of these kids, both actors, commercials, dramatic, and pageant babies, girls, young people, are in the process of bringing memories back into their life so that they can focus on 
what actually happened to them, them. I am seeing that. But she draws my mind to this photographer. He is somebody that was well known in the neighborhood and all of the managers and agents and people sent their students, their actors, their wannabes, their pageant circuit people, their commercial actors to this photographer. And it's through this photographer that people could look through the pictures. What she's showing me is a book of headshots. Let's just say it's headshots like in the seventies or eighties. And we're looking and, Oh, I'm a manager or I'm hiring for a client that wants a little kid for a commercial. So I'm looking through this book of headshots and I want this little girl or I want this guy. I think they're the perfect all American kid or I think that they'll represent my company the way I want them to. That's how it was presented. But there was a far more, I'll say nefarious thing going on underneath. So I really feel that John Bonet's passing was timed to the day, specific, I don't know that she was necessarily supposed to die in that manner. I do know that her death was captured on some element of media. I don't know if I mean a tape recorder, a camera. This is why she doesn't like to show her face. She low, lowers her head. She does not like to be seen as that pageant girl. That's why she looks so different because there was a part of her that remained on film from the day that she passed. That is out there. That is not hidden. I mean, well, it is hidden from the general public, but that is out there. Her father had the connections and was doing business the night before. The night before she passed, the days before, her father was talking to people involved in this element of child, child, I don't know what to call it. I, I don't, I don't know that it was a completely organized ring, but these were people that were interested in children for sexual reasons. Her father was connected to those people. Her father was one of those people. Her father was raising his oldest son also to be one of those people. Burke was being raised to be one of those people, but in a different way. He was being abused such as the older brother had been abused. The older daughter had been abused. These things were happening within the family. This strand is really, really strong of this. I'm positive. I wasn't there. I don't have firsthand knowledge, but I'm picking up on the energy of it. It was more of the bolder authorities. I again, don't know if I want to say the police, but the bolder authorities, there are people in higher up jobs that are very well aware of what happened to John Bonet, who was connected to it. And there's been people thr trying to throw aside and cast dispersions in different directions. Now, was her father there at the exact moment that she was murdered? And I'm going to say no. It's very interesting. I'm being drawn to these different faces and people watching her and it's, I feel like Patsy knew this was an issue because she knew some of the backstory, but not fully. It's almost like she didn't believe it. I don't know if somebody told her this or mentioned this to her or she overlooked it, but I'm sure she knew of it or it had been mentioned and she put it aside. So her callousness in not paying attention or believing it or choosing not to see it much like you can see in these cases with these moms that are like drinking and drug addicted and they choose not to see something. Yeah, they're wrong, but they're also not necessarily a hundred percent guilty. They're complicit, but in a different kind of a way because they're not fully able to handle what is being presented, I guess might be the way I'd word it. I know that John Bonet does not hold animosity towards her mother. And I know that her mother, the, the, the quick snap I got of Patsy is that she literally looks at her husband and she blames him. Okay. This is who she blames. Now I'm just talking from her perspective and I still don't get the impression that she feels like he directly murdered his daughter, their daughter, because that's not what I get. I do get that there was a child photography porn ring going on in Denver. I do get that there were officials that were high up in the authority. This is either the police, the government, uh, politics on some level that were connected to this. I believe it was going on. I believe that John Ramsey knew that this had to happen. Uh, I don't know if I want to say he planned it, but I feel like he was aware that this was going to be happening 
or going to happen. So somewhere in his psyche, this was expected, although I'm not sure the way that it was expected was. He basically dissociated from what happened as if it was part of what he had to do. So this to me tells me that there was something else going on. So I'm going along the lines of feeling like this was a ritual killing. I really am. I'm feeling it. She's not saying it directly to me, but she is alluding to the fact that people have pictures of her in a pornographic way and that there is a uh, testimony to how she died and the people around her. There are people standing around her watching how this happened. It did not happen in seclusion. It did not happen quietly. Certain things were planted at the murder scene to make it look one way to distract and to pull aside. The ransom note was one of those things and it was directed. Now what I do get, and this will sound absolutely, absolutely crazy and sane, I do get that Patsy wrote the ransom note. She's not saying that to me. I'm feeling it energetically and I'm feeling it from the perspective of she was told, you write this note or you and the other kid are gonna get it. Something along those lines where she was being blackmailed to write it, which is why it was written in that way, but this is why she was so defiant about the fact that she didn't write it. It's because she didn't write it. She didn't wanna write it. She was blackmailed into writing it. That's what I get. She just doesn't even turn her face towards me when I'm saying this, but that's what I picked up energetically, so that's what I'm gonna say. She absolutely wrote it, but she wrote it for different reasons than to cover her own ass. This was written as a blackmail, you need to do this now, or else this, this, and this will happen. So a part of her did it just to comply with that, and that's part of the reason why she said, I didn't write it, because she truly didn't write it, Technically, yes, but no. She wrote what she was told to write and she wrote it in as bad a handwriting as she could muster to not be her because she didn't want to write it to begin with because she didn't want this happening and she was completely out of her mind at the time. So Patsy has this thing where she goes in and out of her thinking. She brought the cancer back into her life, that much I know, by the way that she thought. She absolutely punished herself so that she could take herself off the planet because she absolutely couldn't stand what had happened and what she had been brought up in. I don't think she was aware. I really feel like Burke that Patsy had different personalities and different ways of seeing the world through different temperaments, a dissociative disorder. I'm gonna say that. The family seems to have it. The one person who didn't have it was the dad, John Ramsey. He didn't have it. The son, John Andrew, the older son, and the daughter that passed, the daughter that passed, actually what I get, and I don't see her, but what I do get from the energy around that circumstance is I get a young man stepping forward when I try to speak to the daughter and the young man is very protective of her. This is why I really get the impression that this is her fiance and this is why he was going to marry her was to take her away from this. So that daughter was aware of what was going on. And again, this seems to be some kind of family situation of betterment in order to have these things go on. I believe that these things had happened to the daughter as well. And I believe that the daughter's fiance is a young man that I'm seeing standing here who oddly resembled other people in the family, but she trusted him because he was not part of what her family was part of. So I'm very, very clear on that, but he speaks before her as a way of protecting her. Odd thing to say, but I feel like that's what he was doing. And I feel like on the night that the daughter died, he and the daughter were actually walking away from their circumstance connected to that family. So that daughter had said something and was actually walking away from it. And this young man who was labeled her fiance was doing so in order to protect her. That's actually what I think happened. And they almost got away, but didn't get away. So I am saying that that older sister's death was not an, was, um, not an accident, it was intentional, or it was caused due to outside circumstances on purpose to have them make it look like an accident. I will say that. I will say the older son, John Andrew, was participatory in the abuse of his sister. Uh, there were, but it was at different times and he was not the one that killed her, but he was participatory. It was something that he was involved in at the same time. So there is abuse that comes from the older brother 
So when I'm looking at the older brother and not Burke, I'm seeing that the older brother had more connection to the abuse issues going on with John Bonet. And John Bonet on the other side is quite a diverse character. She has been given a chance to grow and flourish. There's a feeling of like not wanting people to worry about her because it keeps her kind of focused on this side. It keeps her connected over here. She does watch her family. She has nothing but love for Burke. There's nothing but love and wanting to connect with him and wanting him to know that she's okay because it really traumatized him. It was not the way, her passing was not the way that everybody described it. It wasn't even close. She is talking to the first lady that got to the scene that absolutely kind of bumbled things. They sent that woman for a reason. They wanted to distract the issue, to confuse everything that went on. They did that purposely. So that suggests to me that somebody in the Boulder Police Department, above the, the, the first officer that they sent, the woman officer, somebody above that absolutely knew that if they sent her, she would be unable to handle the situation herself and therefore make things happen or not be able to secure the crime scene properly and therefore allowing conjecture to happen in the midst of a murder scene. So it's very interesting, but John Bonet is very aware that that happened and that that was done deliberately. John Bonet is very clear that her older brother was participatory in the abuse and not her younger brother. She's also guiding me to people that lived in the neighborhood and there were many. There were many that befriended her family that were into the kitty porn community or business and her father did business this way. Her father's money came from this predilection from these people from this community. It was a close knit community. I don't feel that she was actually supposed to die on that night. I feel like this was some sort of a miscalculation and I do feel, I'm gonna keep saying this, I am going to say that there is some kind of a recording, whether it be a taped recording or a videotaped recording, there is some kind of witnessed event media document that shows what happened to John Bonet Ramsey on the day that she died. It shows the entire process. And by the way, I feel as though the body was moved at the time that they placed her in the basement to find her. That is not where she came from. She was not killed in the basement. That is just not true. That is not where it happened. Again, she shows me that that's staged or it's set up or it's, it's a set. Okay, so it's a set. The appearance of where she was found is not where she died. So that has nothing to do with what was going on at the time. She was not, the reason they found her there is because they put her there. So they put her there after they found out that she was dead. And I do not feel that her brother, younger Burke, did this. Okay, so that she wants out of everybody's head. He did not do it. Now, granted, everybody watching this is entitled to their own opinion and that's fine. But this is what I'm picking up and this is what the energy is directing me to say, so I'm saying it. So hopefully this has answered whatever questions that came through. I answered whatever I could. I wrote them down, but then I probably forgot some, but I tried to give as many answers as I could from what I got last time. So this again has been my second video on John Bonet Ramsey and my name is Sloan.